It's Butterfly Garden Beautification Day, and I'm here for it. I think it's so cool that we ended last week's video with this beautiful butterfly, and we're starting this week's video by releasing it in my garden because I can't think of a better way to add beauty to a butterfly garden than by adding a butterfly. This is a zebra longwing. And if you watched my video last week, you saw this beauty eclose. And now you're gonna get to see it fly in my garden. There we go. First section that needs beautification is right here. That's my narrow leaf sunflower and it's looking pretty bad up against the beautiful sleepy hibiscus. It's still bright green. So we're gonna clean that up and then right across the walkway, actually there's a gulf fritillary butterfly. Uh, that little area right there, ugly too. It's an ugly eyesore and it's right smack in the middle of the walkway where I walk back and forth. I see that. So that's first on the list. So as you can see, I trimmed back my narrow leaf sunflower a bit, but it is not greening up. It does still have some green on it but there's definitely more brown. This is a plant that can go dormant and come back, so I'm just gonna trim it down. And if it wants to grow back now, or if it wants to wait till the spring, it can do what it wants. Meanwhile, we're just going to give it a little bit more of a chop, because the first chop wasn't enough. All right, here we go. See, we're looking better already. This is the Elliot's Aster. And I'm just going to run my hand up and pull off the dead leaves. But I let them fall below. I prefer they get composted right here where they would normally fall. Put those nutrients back into this garden section. But they're a lot easier to hide down in the garden than they are growing up the stems. This whole stem. See this whole stem? I'll trim that off because there's, there's nothing green on it. Now look how much better that whole area is. All the dead dying brown is gone. And we're back to green and then I'll let the sleepy hibiscus just fill in. But there's also still this corner. <laughs> and I have the perfect thing for here. This is Rudbeckia herta or Black Eyed Susans. And it's very happy in the sun. And I have this pot of it right here and you can see all the flowers and blooms on it. Well, I have another pot of it. Like there's a little zebra long wing. I wonder if that's mine I just released. I have another pot of it right here and you can see it's not doing very much. Well, because it's not getting any sun because it's completely overshadowed so this pot on that corner will probably absolutely love the sun it will get there and it'll get full of those yellow flowers so this pot's going to move to the corner better already there's the pot now imagine that when the sun hits it it's going to grow and it's going to get the little yellow flowers right on the corner the frog fruit is gonna grow in 
and spread through there. And it's going to get even better looking, but all the dead brown is gone. And that's the eye-catching eyesore. Like, this whole area still isn't, like, pristine beautiful, but it's going to be. And it doesn't have something that stands out as an ugly eyesore, like the whole dead, dried-out leaves that were there. But still, right across, right over there is that ugly eyesore. And look what's right beside it, border grass. Border grass is such a fabulous thing to put along edges because it hides all the ugly below and all you see is the beauty above. And I happen to have tons of border grass. Right here in this little walkway over by my shade garden is a pathway we used to walk through and in. And if you come straight up, this hibiscus is completely blocking the pathway. So I can remove these clump or two of border grass right here to open up the walkway to get into the shade garden. And I can actually split those clumps and make even more and just fill in that whole area with these guys right here. You guys, it's future me popping in because my phone randomly does this really weird thing um, in recording because I film on my phone. And it, um, it like slows down the sound. And so I sound like this weird, creepy voice. Like it's slower and deeper. But creepier than that, like I can't even, I can't, I can't even make myself sound as creepy as I sound. <laughs> and so there are sections of what I filmed today that I had to delete because I had a creepy voice. So I'm just going to like pop in and uh, like I am now and let you know what you missed because creepy voice took over. So what you missed was me digging out this clump of border grass and opening the walkway up to my shade garden. And then the clump was right here and I showed you how I split it in three pieces. One, two, three. And you missed all of that too. It's really easy. You just take the shovel and just like um, whack it down and it'll just divide the one big clump into three. And now we're back on track. All right, it's looking pretty good. See how the border grass just kind of blocks everything? It adds more green and less weedy. I love it. Oh my goodness, he's drinking out of the, oh, that dog. Okay, <laughs> on to more things. Look at how pretty the sun is making my garden look right now. Don't you love the dog panting in the background? Okay, next is right here. The little hole. I'm going to leave that for them because it's like their little hideout. So I'll leave the little path. But right here beside it, again, spot of ugliness. So a cool thing is while I was digging out space for the border grass, there is this penta and it's sad looking. Look how sad. 
Look how sad looking it is. Because it was like under the overgrowth of the porter weed. So I'm just going to plant that right here. And still, it's not going to look pretty right away. But it will because it's going to get fabulous sunshine there. And it should recover nicely. Sometimes it just takes a good eye and a good pair of pruners. These are my Felco pruners, link below, my Amazon links. And you know how your eye always finds the thing that's not right? Well, sometimes there's just one not right little thing that just needs snipped off that makes the whole thing look so much better. For example, right here is my red penta garden. And as we get closer in, you can see there is this one little cluster right here. This one and this one that aren't looking so hot. And they kind of detract from everything else. So just going down to where it splits... Just going down to where it splits, I'm just going to give it a little trim. Pull those pieces out. Here's another one. And then I'm going to get this one. Look what a difference. Do you see that? What a difference. Just walking through your garden with a pair of pruners can make everything look so much better. Well, you actually have to prune something. You can't just walk through your garden and, and carry the pruners. You have to use them. And then it can make everything look so much better. Right here is this gorgeous tithonia, but it is in desperate need of some deadheading. And if I just come through and trim all these off and trim off the brown looking leaves, I'm gonna take this stem all the way down to here. And again, these leaves are full of nitrogen. So when I trim my tithonia, I just let it fall. And they can just decompose right there. Just getting rid of that. It's looking more green and bright orange already just by trimming off the dead head flowers and the browning leaves. It can make such a difference. But here I am on the other side of my pentagarden. And this section right here looks like something landed there and smashed everything over so I'm going to find something to tuck up under and push those pentas back up so they're not leaning out over the border grass kind of like what I did here with the tithonia I was just trimming you can see I've got it standing up with chunks of wood I took some of my pots. See this big round one? I laid it on its side and literally rolled it back to push this whole plant up. So this is up and it's not laying down over the border grass. Same with these two. I put these two little pots in here right under the bases of the plants. And now they're going up and they're filling in that section. Can you see the difference from when I was over here filming before? It's really filled in, but another even bigger thing is this tall penta right here was leaning back. So I tromped in there behind it and I put, can you see them down in there? I put some pots down in there to push them forward and that made a significant difference in filling in this hole that was right there. And let me show you what I found while I was back there.
Look, growing down there is this gorgeous little penta. So I'm going to dig that baby up and move it out somewhere where it can be seen. And now you can have a clear view of, look, there's a zinnia growing in this pot. Um, how I'm using these pots to literally push forward these pentas to keep them going upright. All right, I'm going to go get my shovel and get that little baby out of here. Hi, future me again. So creepy voice took over my phone again, but you missed the whole part of me digging out the penta and putting it in a pot with the frog fruit. So let me go show you what that all looks like. I had this empty pot back here. So I planted that gorgeous penta that I found and then the frog fruit from Joyful Butterfly I put in front. So when this blooms, it's going to be a really pretty combination. And frog fruit is the host plant to the white peacock. So maybe I'll get some little caterpillars in here because they are the most adorable little caterpillars. But they're so hard to find. <music> Thank you. 